Hey everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and welcome to Whip Wednesday episode number 85 where I'm going to be answering some pre-submitted questions that we get on a form for y'all today. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a flash sale that we're currently running. We're going to compare and contrast to projects that I get questions about all the time. And I've gotten questions for years and years about these. And then I'm going to share with you a little sneak peek on my next upcoming club. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure the technology is on our side. I see some of y'all are already chatting in the chat box here, both on Facebook and on YouTube, so that's great. Now, I'm coming to y'all from my home sewing or crafting studio now because I pack in all the things in here uh, in North Central Florida where it is sunny today, but it was storming all of yesterday pretty much. So let's see. Hi, Valerie. Awesome. Hi, Zena, which is a neighbor to me. Awesome. Okay. Hey, Elaine, tuning in. We got Deborah in the house from Port St. Lucie, Patricia from Tucson, Arizona. Great. And Francoise is in the house from the Swiss mountains. So welcome. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I decided to kind of change things up for this Whip Wednesday episode because one of the questions that I received from a viewer named Karen asks, uh, she she submitted. So first of all, a quick little side note here. If you have a future question that you'd like for me to answer on an episode, on an upcoming episode of Whip Wednesday, make sure to use the caption if you're watching us on Facebook or in the video description box if you're catching us on YouTube. I always include the information there on the Google form that you can click on and then submit your questions. So uh, one of our team members goes through and sorts out all the questions into different categories like garment sewing, quilting, binding, zippers, bag making, things like that. And so so every week we go through them and we select different questions that I answer then on the live show here with y'all. Okay. So that's how I got this question. This one is from Karen and she says, I make these bags and then she put a link to her site where she makes these little bags and they are sewed together bags, which we'll show you in a minute. But then she goes on to say, please tell me the best thread to use and please send a link to your shop. Thanks a lot. All right. So let's go ahead and give everybody the over my shoulder shot here so we can talk a little bit about these bags. So the sew together bag, Y'all have probably seen this for sure. Most of y'all have heard about it and I'm going to bet that a good majority of y'all have probably made it or tried to make it in the past. So these are the bags that Karen said she's making and she's asking me what is or what I think is the best thread to use for this. Now, this is something that I've talked a lot about in the past and that is that for all my bag making projects, whether they're small bags, big bags, purses, crossbody bags, laptop bags, lunch totes, I make all that stuff and of course I have video courses on all these kinds of projects. I always recommend that my students use a good quality 100% polyester uh, thread, okay? Now the thread that I like to use and we carry it in the shop in several different colors. Uh, some of the colors are sold out but if you buy this stuff in a neutral, first of all it's super budget friendly. This is Wonderfill Designer. It's just a general all-purpose sewing thread, okay? I'm a quilter also, and so for quilting, I like to use 100% cotton thread for piecing, usually something in the 50 weight. A lot, I know a lot of quilters like to use Aurifil. I use Aurifil sometimes too. I tend to go more towards Wonderfill these days. The cotton version of the Wonderfill thread is called Confetti with a K, and that is because it's more affordable to me, and I buy it and we sell it in our shop. So that's usually what I have on hand. The designer thread, though, this is by Wonderfill. is a Canadian company. This is 100% polyester uh, thread. It comes with, I want to say it's like a thousand meters on this little spool and they're like less than $4 US. So I, if you have it in a gray like this, it's going to be great for all these types of projects. Now, a lot of times I get the question why I prefer a polyester thread over a cotton thread for things like this, even though we're using say probably cotton batting and cotton fabric. Well, because for me, I tend to pack my bags, pouches and things like that to the edge. I mean, I'm going to pack them full of stuff to where the zipper is like struggling to close most of the time. And because I know that I'm like that, I just want to make sure that I'm using the strongest thread possible. So cotton is a, a better quality. A lot of times people will consider it because it's all natural, but a natural fiber is going to be weaker than a man-made fiber. So polyester we know is man-made and so therefore it's going to be stronger. So the Wonderfill designer thread is what I carry in my shop and I know a lot of your work are, are waiting on the panache color and I just got word from Wonderfill today that it shipped. So those are going to be back in stock soon but I still have a couple of other colors in there that y'all can check out and if you're ever looking for any of the products that I'm talking about or you want to shop with us you can visit our online shop at craftygemini.com shop. Okay all the categories and sub menus are there. 
Now, so for Karen, if you're watching or you're going to watch this later, what I would suggest for making these sewed together bags, and it's what I use when I've made these three, uh, is to use a polyester thread because as you can see in the project itself, this, the side ends that are tucked in serve as the handle as well. So you know that if you're putting a bunch of stuff in here, and this probably has maybe a solid three pounds worth of stuff, I know that where this is connected here, it's not just, the stitches are not just going to pop and come away, you know, and fall apart and things like that, all right? So that's what I would recommend. And so then I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk to y'all about the flash sale that we're currently running. Now, the Sew Together bag, let's talk a little bit about the pattern. This is a pattern by Sew Demented. So I have my online course on sale $10 off right now. You don't need a coupon code. It's just $10 off the regular price until tomorrow. I sent out an email to my newsletter subscribers yesterday letting y'all know about the 48-hour flash sale. So if you're not on my email newsletter list, you might want to get on because when we do these quickie little 48 and 72-hour flash sales, that's really the best way to uh, find out about it is via email because, you know, if you're watching me on Facebook or on Instagram, the algorithm is not always going to give you every day whatever I'm posting, okay? So my video course, which is step-by-step -step how to make this project, is on sale $10 off. But the hard copy pattern still needs to be purchased. It's not my pattern, so I can't just include it for y'all, obviously. So this is by Michelle from So Demented, and it's a whole booklet, okay? It has all the supplies and obviously all the pattern instructions and the template that you need to make it. Then in my step-by-step -step video course, I teach you how to make it step-by-step. -step. Now, I sent out an email yesterday telling my subscribers like, hey, this is a super popular bag. It's been around for years. I want to say over seven or eight years or so. And... A lot of times, my students, from what I've heard from y'all over the years, is that you had the pattern, or you signed up for a class, or you tried to tackle it at a retreat one day, but you never got through it, or you didn't really have successful results. And that is, probably if you're watching my videos and you're tuning in, maybe you're a visual learner, which is who I tend to attract because that's how I teach, right, is via video instruction. And so, to let you know about my class, it's 16 step-by-step -step video lessons. There are a lot of tricky points in making this project and a lot of stuff needs to be done correctly. So I share with you my tips and tricks to make sure that everything is symmetrical, right? Because if it's not and you're not measuring correctly all the different checkpoints that I tell you about in the video, le in the video lessons, then you can end up with a bag that's like tweaked or distorted one way or the other or things when you close the zipper, it doesn't end up being nice and neat and even across like this. And so I know that a lot of students who are visual learners tend to do better, obviously, seeing somebody else do it. And so if you're one of those where written instructions oftentimes confuse you more than help you when you're trying especially to sew together a three-dimensional object like this sew together bag, then I think the class is going to be awesome for you. And of course, if you want to sign up just for the next 24 hours because the sale started yesterday, uh, the link is in the description box below and you can sign up for that class, okay? Now, because the class is $10 off, if you get my video course and you buy the pattern, you're basically getting the pattern for free for the regular price of the class. So you'll still be able to get both. And we have these in stock still. I did also go ahead and place another order. So if it sells out, we'll have more on the way and we can ship them out as they come in. But the video course and the pattern are sold separately. So just so you know that. Now, let's talk a little bit about the bag inside. You can see I have three. And I use these for all different types of uses, which I'll show you in a second when I open them up because I, I do actually use mine. Now, the dimensions, finished dimensions, because I always get asked this. It measures about 10 inches by 5 by 5, okay? That's this little guy. And let me just pop in here. Hi, Zena. She says, you're a great instructor, Vanessa. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Windless Original says, your lessons are so helpful. I've learned. Awesome. Oh, thank you, Rosa. She says, I have this course and I can't, and you can't go wrong with your lessons. I'm a visual learner, which is great. So you already know, like, yes, a lot of you that have experience sewing might think, you know, it can't be that hard. I'll make it. But the fact that I was able to crank out 16 separate video lessons tells you just exactly how much info I could pass along to you what the steps are and how step-by-step -step my instructions are. If you like my free video tutorials on YouTube because, you know, my teaching style and how methodical I am and breaking things into bite-sized chunks, my video courses really just go over and beyond because I'm not limited by like a 20-minute tutorial that I could do on YouTube, okay? So just so y'all know that. So let's start with this one. Super cute fabric. If you are going to be signing up for this class and as a beginner, if this is your first time tackling this project or something similar to this, I recommend that you start off with a non-directional print, okay? If you've taken my classes, you know what I'm talking about. A non-directional print like these three, meaning the fabric, the design, and the motif on it, it doesn't have a set direction. I don't have 
unicorns or little teddy bears that I want to be able to see top to bottom, right? You don't have text on here where we don't want to be looking at the pouch from the front and to have the words be upside down. That wouldn't be cute. It would still be functional, but you know, you want to do your best to have it going the correct way. Now in this project, this outside panel, the exterior main panel basically rolls over to here. Okay. So in the video course and in the pattern, you'll see that the designer includes some tips on how to work with a directional print. If you want to make this so that you do have the fabric reading correctly from top to bottom on each side. And I talk a little bit about that in the video lessons. Okay. But aside from that, we know that we have the handle here. It's super sturdy. Although the sides are not fully sealed, stuff is not really coming out of here because it's so cinched up together. So just keep that in mind. So this is the one that I use for my journaling stuff and I have all like my paintbrush markers and pens. So notice we have three main zippered compartments on the inside. So already taking note, you'll need four zippers for this project, right? One longer one that's for the main closure. And then you have three shorter zippers that are for the inside. Now I use for these ones, I always use just number three craft zippers. They're super affordable. You can find them in a ton of lengths. If you don't have the right size, you can always cut one down that's longer. There's a lot of different things that you can do. All right. Uh, oh, great. Maureen says, I'm very much a visual learner. Your video courses are great. I'm glad to hear it. All right. So three zippered compartments. One, Two, you see I have different markers in each one of these, but as you saw when I first opened it up, I have stuff in between as well, okay? So I can put different markers in between or whatever it is. You know, this one just happens to be for my markers, but you do have a gap in between the zippered compartments, so this can hold quite a bit, all right? So this one, when I teach the video lesson, or if you sign up for the class, you'll see that I recommend starting off with just three fabrics so that you don't get too confused. You could, I would say, start off with three fabrics for your first one. Once you're able to work from the beginning to the end and you know how it all comes together, then feel free to make it scrappy. These make great gifts. And again, the finished dimensions are about 10 inches by five inches by five inches. Okay. Now, obviously I do have, um, permission from the designer to offer this class. And this was a part of our bag maker subscription box that we did last year. So I know a lot of you that were in that subscription box program had, uh, access to the course and you bought the kits and all that stuff. So you have that, but again, it's on sale. My video course on how to make this is on sale of uh, $10 off the regular price right now, just for the next 24 hours. Okay. And then we do have the hard copy pattern, so you can check that out. Let's open up the next one. So this one I use for my crochet hook. So again, I have room in between the zippers and I keep like my really jumbo hooks in here. Some of these are really cute little glitter ones that I have and they're jumbo size too. So I just keep them out of the zippered pockets. But I mean, measuring tapes, a pen to mark um, my patterns with that kind of stuff in here. Some of the smaller hooks, scissors, a darning, a plastic darning needle, stitch markers. I mean, all that kind of stuff. So I just want to show you all three of the ones that I use because they, you know, I use them for different things. They're great for gifts. And that way, if you keep all your supplies like this, if you're going to a class or a retreat, or you're going to get together for a crafting night with some friends, you can just grab the one that you need for the stuff that that craft calls for. So I have more crochet hooks. I have a couple of stitch markers just thrown in there. All right. So one, two, three zippered compartments and a main fourth with room still to tuck things in between. So one was for my markers and journaling stuff. This is my crochet one. And then I have another sew together bag that I use for some of my circular sock knitting machine supplies. I don't have too much in here because it's in my little Ikea cart. Um, I was on a retreat last month or yeah, last month. And so I had, was taking stuff out all through the retreat, but you can see I have some of my uh, river needles here, not river needle, the regular needle, cylinder needles. I have my little, um, I was about to say socket these English words. It's my bonnet. There we go. Um, the little bonnet. It's what you need to start when you're going to make a sock on the circular sock machine. You need to cast on, uh, like scrap yarn first before you put on your real yarn. So this is how we start our projects so that we don't have live stitches that are just going to unravel when you finish your sock. But anyways, we have several sizes of these for different stuff. I think this is the one for my 64 cylinder. Um, measuring tape, some stitch markers, you know, you can just throw any old thing in here. I even have a, a pen, a little container with some more stitch markers, the screwdriver that I need to change the, the cylinders on my machine, all that kind of stuff. So if you you know, are into different types of crafts, you can already start to kind of think about what you could use this little sew together bag for. Let me tuck in this side one here. 
All right. Yes, Eunice says that's a cute and very useful bag. It is super useful. Some of us even have um, these little enamel pins and stuff. You can decorate it and put cute stuff on it. So those are the three that I have made and that I use, obviously, of the Sew Together bag. Okay, that's one project. Now, I often get asked, how does the Sew Together bag compare to the all rolled up tote that many of us have made and that you probably made as a part of my uh, organizer club that I did back in 2018. And I thought today would be a great opportunity to visually show you all the difference, okay? Because, you know, when you say, oh, the other one's right bigger, it, it's, it's hard to see, but I thought, well, I'm gonna be on video, so we'll show it here. Check it out. These are my three sew together <laughs> bags, and side by side, you can see that it is three of them are about the size of one. So when I say the size difference between these two is significant, it is significant, okay? Now this pattern is the all rolled up tote, and this is by my friend Tammy from Color Me Quilted, and this has an 18 page PDF. Now, again, I have, um, I have permission to teach the class, and I also have permission to include the PDF pattern for this project as a part of the class. So if you wanna sign up, you don't have to buy a hard copy pattern. The PDF download comes with your access to the class, and then I just pay Tammy based on all the PDFs that people sign up for, you know, and pay her that way. So let's talk about, aside from visually seeing the difference, I know a lot of you are like, oh, I've made the other one, but what, what's the difference? Like three of these is the size of this. What I can fit in all three of the pockets of the Sew Together bag, I can put into one zippered pocket of this one. So we've gone through these, let's scoot them out the way, and let's go ahead and open this. So the first most notable thing is, and I will tell you because I've made several of each of the patterns is, they look similar because of the style of the closure and the inside slipped in pockets, but the construction techniques are different, okay? The side panel templates, they're all different, it's different shape. So although to, you know, the basic eye, you'd be like, oh, those are the same, one is just bigger, it's really not. Like, I use them for totally different things as well, and the construction techniques are different. So one quick thing that I will mention is that in the video course for this one, I teach you how to hand sew the binding all around the edge here, okay? On this one, we machine stitch the binding. So if that, if you're thinking, well, I'm not too advanced, or I don't like hand stitching binding, or my arthritis doesn't let me, that may be a reason to choose one over the other just for that, because obviously this is gonna be quicker, smaller, uses less fabric, but it's a totally different construction technique as well to this. So let's open this guy up. Well, before I open it, let me show you. If you look at it from the top, Ooh, from that angle, you can't really tell, but the back half is bigger, okay, than the front half, and there's some reasons for that. So when we open this up, and I'll tell you, when I first made this, I think I put like 20 pounds of supplies in here, and I, tell, I put like every rotary cutter I had, all my scissors, glue, like every tool I could think of, and it still wasn't full. So this is totally different than a sew together bag, okay? It's not gonna be the same thing. And of course, you're gonna learn different sewing techniques. So look at this, how big. It has a quilted panel. So let's open it up. And I think I made this one, whew, 2017? This is old, but haha, -ha, definitely still functional. Okay, so we open up the zipper and let's have a look. I put some stuff in this one just to give y'all uh, the visual of what you can see. So see, this kind of stays up like this, so you kind of have to roll it back. Now the back I mentioned was longer than the front. This is super helpful because if you're in a class or at a retreat, you can put some of your taller bottles of stuff, your glue, your, um, like a basting spray, like some of the taller stuff, you can take it out of your pockets and kind of stand it back here so that it's upright, okay? Then we have one, two, three, Four of the main zippered pockets that are massive, plus in the course, the, the, so the PDF for this one, remember this is called the all rolled up tote and I have included the link in the description box. The video course that I teach for this has 18 video lessons and it includes the PDF, okay? So aside from step-by-step -step how to make it in these four compartments here, we also have a bonus video on how to make these little clear pouches and I think, oh, where's the other one? It's in this version. I just put it in here so y'all can see. This is another one that I made. They're huge. I mean, they're just massive. There's over 50 clips in here and it's still not even full. Like when I tell you every part of this bag is big, is big. If you live in an apartment and you don't have a full sewing room and cubbies and a big shelf and all this, one of these is gonna house all your sewing supplies, okay? So 
we have a little lobster clasp in the edge there and that way you can keep them clipped in there and so you just kind of take them out work through what you're working with here and you can tuck them in again because you have the space in between the pockets but again I've mentioned the construction techniques are different the templates are different shapes it's it's a different bag okay Yes. Oh, Liz says, I got this bag pattern in that bag club in the 2018 organizer club. She says, I gave it for a birthday gift. I forgot to post it. I will, will make more. It is, I mean, massive. I could see this for like a makeup artist who travels to different shoots and sites. I mean, you could store so much in here. So let's take those out. Then just to give you a visual, I went ahead and threw some stuff in here so you can see. I'm going to be teaching some classes to some of the seniors locally. And I know that I'm going to fill one of these just with like extra supplies. And that's what I'm going to take because I'll have plenty there for everybody to share, to have. I mean, I have three rotary cutters in here and it's nothing. You know what I mean? Like there's still room for rotary cutters in here. I could probably fit six or seven easily in the one pocket, okay? The next one, I have two shears, a sharp pair of shears, I have pinking shears and I have four spools of thread and there's still plenty of room. In the next one, I tried to find some of the bigger things so that I can give you all the visual. Look at this. The entire clapper fits in a pocket plus basting spray, plus an entire bottle of Elmer's glue, plus a glue pen and a choco liner. I mean, when I tell you it's big, I hope that this is kind of, you know, showing you what I'm trying to show you, that this thing is massive, okay? The last one here, are you ready? <laughs> My entire spray mist bottle. You can put water in this thing, tuck it in there, and you literally still have room on the sides to put other stuff in there. Not to mention that I mentioned we have this thing in the back. We have two little bonus um, clear zip pouches that you can add stuff to. You can thin, flat things, you know, you can tuck them in between here. And this is probably one of my favorite things about the all rolled up tote. We have an elastic strip on the front. So here you can put smaller things like that choco liner that we had there, we can put it in here. We can put um, some marking pens, chalk markers, little scissor snips, different little things that you can put on here and then underneath are y'all ready for this it has a quilted sleeve down here that we use prepare prepare for this let me grab everything <laughs> as ruler storage obviously you're smaller rulers but look i have a six by twelve i have a six and a half by six and a half i have a nine and a half by nine and a half and I have two of my five inch by 10 inch rulers tucked under there. So not only is that giving stability to the whole thing to help keep it flat, but it's like its own sleeve under there that we make to keep it nice and flat and store the smaller rulers. If you went on retreat, I mean, aside from these rulers, what else would you need? Maybe a long strip ruler that you could carry outside of it. But look at this, all tucked under here. So hopefully that shows you visually that this is a totally different project than this little guy. Okay, let me see if I have any questions on here. Let's see. Yes, Windless Original says that's such a great visual. Thank you. Side note, the water mister is so great. Isn't that? I mean, you have everything in here. If you also have, like for classes or retreats, if you keep one of those little mini irons, you can just tuck that thing back here. Done and done. Okay, so let's see. Yes, the Sparrow's Nest says, I made the all rolled up tote when it was released and I even brought it to the Crafty Gemini Jeans Retreat back in 2019. That was a fun one. I remember. <laughs> okay, so just so y'all know, oh good, Zena. She says, so glad Vanessa's highlighting these bags and all they can hold. I mean, it's, it's a ton. And this is not even everything. Snips, you can put all your clips in here. Oh, and this is another thing that we often use. When we bring these to retreat, I sometimes will flip this out like that to have it be nice and flat. And then we'll have, uh, obviously, these I keep in my studio. So if you have a magnetic um, pin holder like this that has the lid, keep it with the lid, you know, put it maybe in one of the pockets or whatever. And then you can have this on your table next to your sewing machine. And we would keep this here. We would pour out some of the clips right here. So it's not going to roll away. You know that you have it right there, but that way you can work from your big old tote here, the all rolled up tote. Okay. Great. Yes. Good. Susan says, thank you for demonstrating the difference because I was confused and thought they were the same thing. No. So they're two totally different patterns. They're by two totally different designers. And again, I use them for different things. They require different sewing and quilting techniques. Um, the binding on one we do by hand, the other we do by machine. Of course, we have a quilted sleeve under here. The side templates that you use for the side panels are totally different shape. I mean, they're two totally different bags, but I, like I said, that's kind of why I took advantage to show with, uh, share it with y'all here on this episode of Whip Wednesday so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Now, this was from my first fabric collection. Not all of these. These are 
I think this is from a Mary Fonz fabric collection from way back in the day, these, this yellow and green one. But you can see it's a great opportunity. If you have those mixed bundles of craft zippers, this is awesome. You can make this whole thing scrappy. Just use different colored zippers, throw it in there. Super fun. And this would make a great gift. And like I said, this one I would take maybe to, for a long retreat and put everything in there. If you're someone who teaches classes, if you travel to teach, that would be great. Or if you're low on space for your sewing supplies or any crafting supplies, you can keep them all in this thing, okay? Because it is massive. So here's another one. This is the one that I actually made when I was filming the tutorial. So I shared some tips with y'all here on different directional prints. This one still has um, the elastic strip along the front and we stitch them in different increments so you have space there to put stuff in. And um, the little clear pouches, I made them to match this one in my very Halloween-y type of <laughs> fabrics here. Super cute. All right. Now, this one also features a handbag zipper, a number 4.5 handbag zipper, and we hand stitch the binding on. So kind of a little bit more intermediate, I would say, because there's just so much more going on in this project versus the sew together bag. Okay. But again, they're two totally different projects. They're different designers and different everything. Okay. Um, Yes, Elaine says, is the pattern for the small one only a hard copy? I can only sell it in hard copy since it's not my pattern, but if you go to her site, I want to say it's sodemented.com. That's the name of the pattern designer's company. So Demented, she may sell it on a PD, as a PDF version herself, you know, so that would be an option. And then you could just sign up for the digital course, and that way you don't have to pay for postage to Germany, like you mentioned. Awesome. Okay. Yes, Karen says, I made the all rolled up and, and I love it. Might make a second one. Yeah, a lot of times if you've been around for my bag clubs for years, since 2015, maybe, you know, you have access to those projects because like I tell every time, like I tell everyone every time I come out with a new course or a new club, when you sign up or pay for any of my paid courses, it never expires. So if you were in the 2018 uh, organizer of the month club, just log into your account and you can watch all the videos and download the PDF. Okay, so all that stuff will be right there for you. Oh, uh, Windless Original says, will you also have them opened next to each other, please? Sure, let me, this is the front of this one. And this is the one that has stuff in it, so the, the, the zippers are going to look a little bit more upright because they're full already. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a baby version. <laughs> I could tuck it in the front probably. <laughs> But there you go. Hopefully that helps give you the visual. And like I said, all three of these closed up is like the size of this one big one closed up. All right, let me make sure I'm not missing anything else here. Okay, so I'll just recap real quick. The Sew Together bag is a hard copy pattern by Sew Demented. I have a video course with 16 step-by-step -step high definition video lessons that walks you through every single step. And I will say in my email, y'all have seen it because in my bag club group on Facebook, when students tackled this project, when they signed up for the class and they made it, many of them said, I would have never been able to do it without your video lessons. Because you know, when you're building something that's 3D and you're going off of just written instructions, it can be really, really confusing as you try to decipher it. Because you know, every designer has their own terminology. We word things differently. And so I, even when I write patterns, I like to also have them be accompanied by video so you can just see. Even if it doesn't, you know, it doesn't quite make sense to you, the sentences, then you can click over and watch the video lesson. And then you're like, oh, duh, now I get it, right? All right. <clears throat> okay. So this, 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 da, da, da. And again, this class and the pattern, we sell the hard copy pattern. You can get it for basically the regular price because the video course by itself is the pattern is sold separately. Okay. But the video course itself is on sale 10 bucks off the regular price. And then this one for the regular price, you get the video course and the PDF version. It's an 18 page PDF pattern for the all rolled up tote. Okay. Everything is in here. And I mean, this is from the PDF pattern that Tammy designed and created. So there's even images here. If you do well with written instructions, then the videos will just supplement it. But if you're one of my typical students, you will probably make it off of the video lessons and just use the written instructions to supplement that. Okay. Okay. So, oh, Melanie says, I admit I fell behind making all the things I signed up for over the years. No worries, Mel. You're not the only one. <laughs> All right, but luckily, you know, the video lessons are there for you. Y'all can log in at any time. Now, let's move on to the next um, couple of questions that I have here that were submitted. Uh, Debbie's asking, why can't we purchase your bag club pattern separately? So something like this, 
we do offer the bag club pattern separately. And these are just a couple of examples. I have, I want to say between 90 and 100 different courses that you can sign up for. So if you're new here and you're kind of like, what is she talking about these clubs? Excuse me, let me sip some water. I've been teaching online videos for almost 15 years now. So I have a lot of courses and of course they're bags, they're projects, they're clothes, they're things that are not like going to expire, right? You can make pajamas at any time. You can make a purse at any time. So all that stuff is still there and you can sign up for the bag patterns individually. I think there's only one club that we, when I launched it, I mentioned that we weren't going to sell them separately or after. And so because I said that I have to stick to it, you know? So the rest of them, I say like after the club is over and the people that signed up at the pre-sale price, once we go through all the projects, then at the end of that session where I've taught all the people live, like they have video lessons, but we do live question and answer sessions. We do live zooms. It's like a whole community making a certain number of projects at once, you know, uh, based on the calendar for that event, that club. Then we release the different projects as separate standalone video courses. And so those you can find on our website. All you do is go to craftygemini.com slash shop. And then in the main shop, all the little sub menus, click on PDF and video workshops. And my entire course library will be right there. You can scroll through. There's crochet classes. There's knitting. There's all, I mean, the majority are different bag projects or wallet projects or organizer projects, stuff like this, retreat bags and all kinds of sewing machine tables and um, mats and stuff like that. Tons of wallets, um, probably over 10 or 12 different types of wallets. There's all kinds of classes, so you can do that. It's at craftygemini.com shop and then hit PDF and video workshops, okay? So you can check out the full thing there. And then, <clears throat> oh my gosh, I'm dying laughing. Zena says, how does <laughs> making the all rolled up tote to compare to the ladybug FPP? <laughs> Which is a, a block that we made as a part of my most recent quilt club. Let me grab it off of my design wall here so I can share with people who maybe have no idea what, <laughs> what you're talking about, Zena, but that is funny. This is the ladybug block that I taught, and um, it's one of our patterns, and <laughs> we taught this little, late. well, I taught the little ladybug block in my recent uh, foundation paper piecing quilt club, and it has a ton of pieces, like 73 pieces in it. <laughs> but Zena, I will say, this bag, it probably takes about the same time, but it's easier. You're working with bigger chunks and, you know, longer seams and stuff, and you're not fighting as much with the little pieces on here. But anyways, this will be available also. The blocks that we did for that foundation paper piecing quilt club, um, which is some of the other clubs that I also offer on my website, will be available soon since we've already worked with our way through all the, all the um, FPP patterns. But that's funny. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Yes, Karen says, I might order the mini one and make a little sewing kit for my granddaughter. That would be so cute. You could put a couple of little spools of thread, a magnetic seam guide, you know, all those little extra things that we like to include for beginners, right? Thread snips, a little pack of sewing clips. That would be so cute because you could fit a ton in here, especially for just like a little beginner kit. That would work really, really well with the sew together bag. Okay. Um, Sandy's asking, she says, I don't see the all rolled up pattern on your site. Can you post a link? So the pattern is not sold by itself. The pattern and the video course come together. So when you go to my website, if you're ever looking for something, when you log in, go to the top right and you'll see like a little magnifying glass. That's where you can search the shop. So if you click on that, a search box pops up and then just type in whatever you're looking for. It could be anything. It could be zipper and then see projects that feature zippers or it could be, you know, all rolled up tote and then it'll pop right up for you. But the link is in the caption here on Facebook and in the video description box on YouTube. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Zena says, as long as it's easier, I'm game for it. Go for it. <laughs> you'll like it. You do a lot of sewing girl. You work on a lot of bags, so you'll be able to tackle this one. No problem. All right. So that was um, that next question. And then I have a couple more questions that are similar. Helen asked, what projects are you going to do this coming year? And Vicky asked, are you going to be doing a club soon? And if so, can you give us a teaser? So yes, now that we're done with the foundation paper piecing quilt club, I wanted to share with you since we're on the topic of zippers and bags here, I wanted to share with you that we are working on the next bag club. And we're almost done. So be on the lookout. Here's a couple things that I recommend. If you like this type of content or you want to start learning how to make these types of bags and zippers and pouches and, you know, whether they're for yourself, for gifts, or to sell at craft fairs, you know that my teaching style is super step-by-step -step and video instruction. So number one thing, 
Sign up for my email newsletter. It is free and that is the best way for you to find out what I'm up to and what sales and what's going on. So that you can do by going to craftygemini.com and on the homepage there you'll see where it says email sign up. Just click on it. You can enter your name and your email address and that will get you right on so that you can get the emails, okay? Second is if you're not yet subscribed to our channel here, to the Crafty Gemini channel on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe because all of you probably know if, you, if you're a returning viewer that right before I open up a new club, I always share with you a couple of videos before with some information, some sneak peeks. I give you tips and tricks. And so that's going to be coming soon because we're getting ready to launch a new club. Okay. So that's number two. Make sure that you're subscribed to us on YouTube. And then three here is a little snippet of a sneak peek, some of the bag projects that we're going to be working on in the new bag club. So this is my zip and zip zipper pouch and it's great for a bunch of stuff, but it also features some different techniques. So we'll talk a little bit more about this when I get to the point where I've like opened up the club and y'all can sign up and stuff, but it's a basic zipper pouch that then also has a zipper pouch installed on the inside. So you have basically, it ends up creating three different compartments, one here, one here, and then one in the center with the zippered pocket. Now on something like this, if you've ever tried to tackle a project like this, you know that having baggy linings is a huge issue. So this is one where I've kept it so the design is pretty basic and simple, but the construction technique, you really need to pay attention and follow what I'm telling you to do so that you have some successful results, okay? Because that center pocket, if it were just done to the regular size and installed in there, if you know how to install it in the side seams so that you don't have any raw edges anywhere, you could easily end up with this being like, I'm trying to make it buckle like that. So where the zipper pocket doesn't lay flat. Okay. And that would be a huge problem. Instead, you end up with something that has a straight zipper on the inside. And there's several different construction techniques that I'll be teaching with this. So if y'all know me, you know that every bag club I do, I like to feature different features, different skills, different techniques and all that kind of stuff. So just to give y'all a sneak peek, you're watching us live or later after the fact. And that is one of the projects that we're going to be working on. Okay. So same thing here, zip in zip. And this is going to be one of the new patterns and video courses that I'm sharing with y'all in the new club. So hopefully that piques your interest and you stick around, you sign up for my email newsletter and you check out some of the different courses that we have. All these courses, whether it's upcoming stuff that I'm going to be teaching y'all or classes that I already teach, I always say that confident beginners can sign up for my classes. Because my videos are so step-by-step, -step, if you know how to thread your sewing machine, if you can wind a bobbin, if you know what the lines on the bed of your sewing machine are for, and I tell you sew a half of an inch seam allowance or sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance, if you know what that means, you can sign up for any of these classes. Because beyond those couple basic things, I go through every single step and I don't just show you, hey, this is what you gotta do. I tell you why you're doing it. And sometimes on projects like these where there's something tricky going on that doesn't quite make sense, and I keep telling you the whole time, you'll see in the videos if you sign up for my classes, I'm just like, it feels wrong. It looks like it's gonna be wrong, but trust me, when you get to this other step, this is why we're doing this. Trust the process, go through. It feels like you're doing it backwards or it feels like you're doing it wrong somehow. But as you go through the process, you'll see that it does end up turning out. Okay. So that's how I like to teach. And I see that it um, definitely works for a lot of you. So I appreciate that. And I'm glad for the feedback. Let me just check in here and see if I have any other um, questions. Yeah, sometimes there are sales, sometimes there's not. We do a little quick flash sales here and there. We don't really do too many sales throughout the year on like all of our stuff or our entire site, but we try to pop in some little flash sales here and there you know, when there's something that I'm talking about or it's on topic. So the best way to stay tuned to see if, you know, there's going to be on a sale on something that you want is to be on the email newsletter. But other than that, you know, I don't really have a guarantee of like on this day we do that. All right. Oh, great question. Anne Marie is asking if you only have an old standard sewing machine, nothing digital, meaning not a computerized one, uh, can you make these bags? Absolutely. So oftentimes I will put in the instruction or excuse me, on the product page for my projects, what you need. So I will tell you, you need to sew for all of these. I'll tell you right now, you need a sewing machine that is in good working order that can sew a straight stitch and you need to have usually a zipper foot for your machine. If it has a zipper, I recommend you have a zipper foot, unless you have like a semi-industrial or an industrial sewing machine that oftentimes the universal foot on it is narrow enough that you can stitch sew, um, stitch close to zippers when you're sewing fabrics to it. But most home sewing machines, I recommend that you have a zipper foot if it's something that you see that has a zipper 
Okay, that's, that's going to require you to uh, install a zipper somehow. But none of these projects feature zigzag stitches. You don't need decorative stitches. You don't need anything fancy. Okay, so yeah, great question. Um, oh, Zena, you read my mind, girl. She says, can the soft vinyl fabric be used for any of these bags? So for those of you that don't know, we recently started carrying some soft vinyl fabric from So Hungry Hippie in a bunch of colors. I need to restock some of the colors, but we still have several in stock. So this fabric, and it's in our online shop. You can find it at craftygemini.com shop. Just click on fabric. It's the first things you'll see. We had it in like 13 different colors. We might have it in like six or seven colors left, but there's still plenty. <clears throat> this stuff is basically like sewing with regular fabric, just a little bit oomph. You know, it has a little bit more oomph for body to it. It's fabric backed. So I will tell you flat out, I'm like, I need to, can you imagine one of these in a quilted version of this? Is my person here? I don't have it, but let me show you here on these little pouches that I made. I wanted to show y'all my purse, but it's out there. Um, because I used my, my purse it is made up. Of, most of y'all have probably seen it. If you follow me on Facebook or, or have tuned into the last couple, um, whip Wednesday episodes, I showed you where I quilted through this fabric and I made my Sunday tote bag. So that purse, or excuse me, quilted, it looks amazing. The texture on that purse is just fab. So for say the all rolled up tote, which we do quilt lightly, you know, you just need it for the main exterior thing and that and the quilted panel that goes on the inside, uh, that would look amazing, okay? With the cross hatching quilting that I did on my Sunday tote for something like this would look amazing. Also for here, in my video course, um, the pattern itself says that you can use different things, like different uh, interfacings or stabilizers for this outside portion here. If you've, if you've signed up for the class, you'll see that I recommend a Bozo Light Fusible Batting, which is a product that we carry in our shop. I think we're sold out right now. They're like back ordered. But it's a light fusible batting, and that is what I use for the exterior here. So I could use that same batting with the soft vinyl fabric, okay, and then just lightly quilt it, and it would look amazing too. So to answer your question, Zena, yes, the soft vinyl would look amazing, and it would work for both of these projects. It would look so good. So good with that sheen, that pop, that metallic fanciness, that would look so, so good. And this is the black color. For anybody wondering, this is the dark sea foam that I have it listed as the dark sea foam on our website. Look how pretty. And then this one, I always get confused because if I don't have them side by side, I want to say this is the rose gold. The gold is like a little bit more yellow than this. And I don't, if I don't have them side by side, I always get the colors confused because they're very, very close, but I, I'm pretty sure this is the rose gold. Okay. So yes, great, great question. And if you do have some of this soft vinyl, either one, they would look great in either one because it's not going to add additional bulk. Now for this, and I say this in the video course for the sew together bag, I, um, I don't use the foam for this, like foam stabilizer, you know, like Bozal Interform, this kind of stuff, just because it's, it's thicker, you know? And so to get it to roll around for some home sewing machines, it might be too thick, especially at the points here where we're stitching through multiple layers, when we're attaching the binding and all that kind of stuff. I have found that that light fusible batting or quilt batting, something like that would work really great. You could probably get away with a fusible fleece, but in my experience, fusible fleeces, some of them tend to be really thick and it might be a little too bulky, but something lightweight would work great for here. But with the soft vinyl, either one, that would look really, really good. All right, let's see. Oh, Nancy says, I'm just getting to the ladybug. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Rosa says, I'm always looking forward to your club openings. Awesome. Well, we're going to be opening another one soon. Let's see. How about using clear vinyl for some of the interior zipper pouches? Guitar Purrs is asking. You could. I would say if you're doing the all rolled up tote here. Oh, they're in this one. You could jump to that bonus lesson, make these little clear pouches just so you kind of get an idea for the construction steps on how they're finished off with fabric so that you have no raw edges on the inside, okay? So try that first and then that will give you a good idea so that you could work out the math of what you would need in order to make these middle pockets be clear vinyl if that's what you're asking. But yeah, that's totally doable. You just have to do a little math and... Um, you know, account for what the what portion of the pouch is going to be clear and what you need to have in order to stitch them into their little pocket areas on the side. Okay. 
Yes, Eunice says the black or gold would make a cute clutch purse for special occasions like prom. Absolutely. Super, super cute. Okay. Um, Kathy Ann is asking, is the soft vinyl the same as faux leather? So the terminology is kind of a little bit all over the place with these fabrics, but it's like vinyl and faux leather are the same thing because they're both fake leathers, right? But this is more like a fabric. So I would, this, I mean, the, the, the source that we get ours from calls it just soft vinyl because it is a synthetic fabric. It's metallic. It has this finish to it, but it is fabric backed. So this, I would say, is kind of like a, a thinner, more pliable version uh, to like a basic vinyl or even cork fabric. But you know how the cork fabric, you can use it just like fabric. It's just a little bit thicker, but it has this kind of smooth uh, fabric backing to it. This is similar. It's just that it's so drapey. It's nowhere near as thick as cork fabric. Because look, this is how you can tell. When it drapes like this and it just like puddles down and you get rolled bits like that when you drape it and drop it over something, cork is not going to do that, right? But they're all kind of in the same range of what you can use them for. The only thing is that because this is more pliable and more drapey, this functions more like a fabric. So whatever, so far I have not come across anything that I have made with a cotton fabric where I can't also use this so far. If anybody has come up across something that like, oh, it works in cotton fabric, but not, I couldn't use the soft vinyl, let me know. Because so far, I mean, the characteristics of each are so similar that they're for me pretty much interchangeable across projects. Okay, let's see. Yes, this video is not going anywhere. So for those of you that are maybe tuning in late or you want to catch the recording after the fact, you can just click on the same links that I've included for the live show in the email that we sent out today to our email newsletter subscribers. Or you can just come to my YouTube channel and look up Whip Wednesday number 85. Okay, and you'll find us here. Same thing. Um, Connie's asking, where did you get the spools of thread fabric? This is a fabric that we used to sell in our online shop, but we're currently sold out. Um, I think it's a timeless, not timeless, my bad. I think it's a Robert Kaufman print, um, but it's sold out. So we sell it, um, and we're out right now. Okay. Um, Kathy Ann says, I've bought the faux leather from your shop, so is this thinner and drapier? Absolutely. Let me grab a chunk of the faux leather that you're talking about because what we have listed, let me grab the sheets from down here, what we have listed as faux leather in our shop is different to this soft vinyl. Don't mind my bent up faux leather, it was smashed into one of my bins. But both of these, this also I can um, steam it from the backside here just to help get rid of any creases and I can do that on cork fabric on this um, Faux leather, excuse, yeah, faux leather, and this soft vinyl. <laughs> so many words. But this is way thicker. It is pliable, but it's nowhere near as pliable. I mean, this is so thin. This is like more like a fabric, and this has a rubbery finish to it, and it's thicker. So the weights would be first the soft cotton fabric, the thinnest, right? Then, so it would be regular cotton fabric, quilting cottons, then this, then this uh, faux leather that we sell in our shop, and then the cork fabric. Okay, these two are close, but the cork fabric is still a little bit stiffer. All right, so hopefully that helps a little bit. Oh, my nose is so itchy today. Um, Liz is asking, will any of my fabric lines ever be reissued? I love your first line, Dominicana, which was these florals, this print and this print and this print from my first fabric collection. I don't think they will be reprinted. Fabric companies don't really do that unless there's like, some wild need for it or something, but it's a pretty old print. I designed these, I think in 2016, 2017, something like that. So they've been gone for a good bit. I, I still have some in my stash just so that I can keep it, but, <laughs> but I think that's it for those. All right. Great. Well, that's going to be it for today. Thank y'all so much for, um, submitting your questions. Remember, if you have a question you want me to answer in a future episode of Whip Wednesday, the link is below. It's a Google form. You can put, you know, your name, your info, whatever, just submit your question and we'll go in and categorize it. And as I work my way through these different Whip Wednesday episodes, we answer different ones. Okay. So there is a new bag club coming. Stay tuned for that. Make sure you're on our email newsletter list. Make sure you are also subscribed to the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. And we will be in touch with whatever is coming next. And then you know that the Sew Together Bag, my video course on it, 
uh, is on sale for just another 24 hours. So if you're watching this later in the future, sorry, but if you sign up for our email newsletter list, you will be the first to know maybe the next time we put the bag course on sale. The hard copy pattern has to be purchased separately, but we do sell that. And that is the Sew Together bag pattern by Sew Demented. The other project I talked about was the All Rolled Up Tote. And this is by Tammy of Color Me Quilted. And I do sell a video course for this one that does include the PDF pattern that goes with it. Okay, so thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you again for all your questions. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.